Kind thanks go to Brilliant for sponsoring today's episode. SpaceX Starship Updates and Starship Evolution My name is Felix, I got a haircut and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. And as always there's been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's take right off. Starship Updates SpaceX is unique to say the least. Before them a launch provider mainly stood for rocket launches. SpaceX brought in a whole new element of excitement. If I had to name one aspect I associate SpaceX with it wouldn't be rockets or launches. It would be advancement. Every single project they are running is advancement. Falcon 9 and heavy advancing in reusability and launch costs, Crew Dragon advancing crewed flight, Starlink advancing the internet and Starship? Yeah, Starship is something special. Serial number 4, the latest advancement in Boca Chica has passed every goal SpaceX has set for it. Several pressure tests up to 7.5 bar, several static fires. It utilizes the latest tech from the construction site and compared to the last real Starship, this one is far superior. It might not have a nose cone nor fins, but the base structure which SpaceX is focusing on right now is sound. It works. It withstands the temperatures and pressure levels and it is able to operate within the set parameters. I bet the team in Boca Chica is mighty proud of what they put on the test stand here. But they're not done with it either. According to Elon Musk it's supposed to fly and there are a few things still missing for that first flight. Some means of flight control, commonly referred to as RCS or reaction control system for example. Starship serial number 4 needs a way to control its flight path. Back in 2019 SpaceX made one of the most curious objects in prototype history fly. And they used Falcon 9 reaction control thrusters to maneuver it through the air. In general there are two components to controlled flight for a SpaceX rocket. Mentioned reaction control thrusters and the so called TVC or thrust vector control on the main engines. It makes the rocket engine gimbal into any direction up to a certain degree. Both systems in combination enable the avionics system to correct the flight path into the desired direction. It enables the prototype to safely take off, hover, fly sideways and land again. On Starship serial number 4 though there are no reaction control thrusters yet. Recently though workers have started to improve the plumbing on the outside. It's not clear yet if the pipes will connect to cold gas thrusters commonly fed by the black COPVs or composite pressure vessels on the hull. But this is what the additional pipes could be thought for. If so we should soon see the typical boxes attached to them. A cold gas thruster probably is the simplest version of thruster used on a SpaceX rocket. It's basically just a computerized valve on the end of a pipe leading to a highly pressurized tank. A small nozzle on top of the valve and you have your thruster. This is what the system looks like on a Falcon 9 booster in comparison. And this is what it looked like on Starhopper. Here the plumbing was done internally. It could well be though that SpaceX just decided to have an external plumbing for serial number 4 as it's likely the only flight it will ever make. The second component, the omnidirectional engine mount has already been seen before. It's this shiny little piece of equipment. This is put directly on the fuel connector on the thrust bulkhead and on the other end of it on the other side the Raptor engine is attached. This enables the engine to turn its thrust into any direction up to roughly 15 degrees. It's recently been installed again after the successful pressure test and here is where Raptor SN20 will apply the necessary thrust for the 150 meter hop. Besides ongoing progress on serial number 4, SpaceX has continued work on their second test stand as well. It will most likely be used for serial number 5 which is already very far along at the construction site. And at the construction site the high bay is filling up again fast. Starship serial number 5 has been stacked. The brand new engine section including the skirt has been moved into the high bay and after that both parts have been joined together. There's one thing though SpaceX doesn't seem to be perfectly sure about. It's unclear why but workers in Boca Chica are making more and more nose cones. The one here sitting in one of the large manufacturing tents right now is already nose cone number 4. One of them was already stacked onto ring segments. It's hard to say from this angle what's the difference with this particular nose cone and it's also hard to say if the other noses will actually be used. They look good to me. 
Maybe this one is for serial number 6 already. They might also just be pathfinders for design ideas and manufacturing methods. And serial number 6 is already far along as well. This here is the top skirt for the uppermost bulkhead on top of the methane tank. It's the part that the nose cone normally is stacked onto. It looks absolutely perfect. Welds are getting better and better. It would be very interesting to know if this already is the new steel mentioned by Elon Musk a while ago. There is no official information though. And on we go with a very detailed picture of the top dome segment for serial number 6. Mary is doing such an awesome job here. Make sure to thank her in the comments. And the same picture here too. The welds are getting thinner and better looking with every version they make. Very even ridges and if you compare this to what we saw on Mark 1, yeah, let's not do that. What's even more interesting though is what's inside the segment by now. This is a picture from last week showing the top dome before it got welded in place inside the rings. Upon closer inspection there's one weld that looks different. The center one. And the reason why is written next to it. Welded by robot. A while back Elon talked about a machine they were building to automate the process of constructing bulkheads. It's a complex and tedious process involving many welds that need to be done very precise. This machine now seems to have picked up first tasks. And as we can see it seems to be doing rather well. The weld is smaller, looks more even and uniform and I can't wait for the first bulkhead to be made only with the robot. If only the workers would leave the doors open once for Mary to take a picture of that ominous machine. On we go with our 3D stacking animation made by Nick. Show him some love in the comments for his great contribution to the team. Nick and I decided to do it like SpaceX and leave serial number 6 in the background for now. As it would be a bit much to show both progresses on one show, so as soon as serial number 5 rolls out of the high bay, we'll do the same for our animation. So where are we at with serial number 5? Well, we have the stacked engine section including the skirt, which is the basis for our starship and it goes here. We also have the complete tank including the integrated header tank and the common dome, the downcomer, the middle rings and the top dome and it goes here. We also have the 3 ring top dome skirt which goes here. Added on top go another 2 welded rings which have already been spotted as well and they go here. And finally we have the nose cone. Let's just assume SpaceX will use the one sitting close to the high bay right now. It will go here. Done. Serial number 5 is finished. It only needs stacking. And as you can see the animation is getting crowded. Serial number 5 with a nose cone and serial number 6 already waiting in the background most likely with full body work including fins in the end. And if you want to get more info about SpaceX's Starship development, details about what exactly they are doing and lots and lots of other interesting insights into Blue Origin, NASA, Rocket Lab and many other launch providers and their rockets, I suggest you check out my quickly growing library of episodes. Here you can find tons of content about reusable rockets, SLS, the Artemis program and anything else space related. While you're at it, do not forget to hit the like button wherever you see it and please do subscribe if you have not done so yet. This shows the YouTube algorithm that you actually appreciate my work and in return enables me to make more content for you. Thank you. There's so much progress in Boca Chica right now that I could actually end today's episode here. But that wouldn't be enough for me. There's always so much more to talk about and today two of my team members gave me the perfect canvas to create the second topic. Starship Evolution Today I want to look back with you into the evolution of SpaceX's Starship so far and I also want to take a peek into a possible future. We've seen many changes so far when it comes to SpaceX's dream of colonizing our solar system. From a colonial transport system to serial number 6 we've come a long way. Let's talk MCT. Doesn't ring a bell? Don't worry, Starship had many names before. It goes all the way back to 2012 when Musk first mentioned the Mars Colonial Transporter. And even back then his vision was different. He wanted something big and first real facts came in September 2016 with a new name. The ITS or Interplanetary Transport System was born. Big might not be a big enough word to describe ITS though. It was gigantic. 12 meter diameter, designed to carry 450 tons of cargo to Mars after orbital refueling. Maybe, just maybe the mighty ITS was just too much though. 
The name went fast and so did the design. Only two months after announcing the name Interplanetary Transport System, Musk already talked about BFR or Big Falcon Rocket. A name derived from a weapon from the computer game Doom where a large weapon is called BFG, which stands for Big F***ing Gun. In September of 2017, Musk officially announced the new design at the International Astronautical Congress. Down from 12 to 9 meters in diameter, a reduced payload capacity of now 150 tons and with a drastically changed design, BFR started to look more like what we're seeing today. If we look closer though, we can see the differences. Different bodywork and maybe most importantly, a composite material design. A huge, very expensive composite tank with a volume of 1000 cubic meters was built and tested to destruction. Extremely lightweight, but also extremely expensive. SpaceX was narrowing down on a difficult design at the time and one aspect wasn't covered yet. Costs. How do you make this feasible? And this is Starship, the first design to carry the now well-known name and a design already much closer to the current one. Initially introduced still using the composite hull and tanks in September of 2018, Musk announced the key change only two months later in December of 2018. Stainless steel. This gave SpaceX two major advantages over the old material choice. It behaved better under cryogenic and re-entry temperatures and it was dirt cheap compared to carbon fiber. And while this little guy was flying, SpaceX did the last major changes to the design. The three fins from the Tin Tin design disappeared and got replaced by the now established two aft fins design. The next presentation in September of 2019 already saw Mark 1, a mock-up build of what Starship was supposed to look like. Later, partly disassembled and tested to destruction, this Starship is the closest we've ever seen built to the current design idea. Since then we've seen many tests come and go. Mark 1 blowing off the top bulkhead. Serial number one losing the thrust puck. Serial number two, a small test tank being tested to destruction to find the limits. Serial number three then with its very unfortunate human error in the test setup. And finally, serial number four. The one that did it all except for a flight. But how does the journey continue? Right now, as you know from my episode, SpaceX is building two more starships for testing. One will have a nose cone and the other one might even have full bodywork. SpaceX is aiming for the 20 km mark and they want to go orbital this year. One very important aspect is missing though. Super Heavy While we've seen Starships built as prototypes, we've never seen the booster yet, besides some fancy animations. SpaceX is getting closer though, and as with the Starship itself, it's likely that we'll see design changes here too. What you see here is our latest take on Super Heavy design. Bottom fins gone, as Musk recently stated. Less Raptor is reduced from 37 to 31 and flip out legs. Musk has stated many times that the legs need a wider stand and recently there has been a new sign mounted to one of the buildings in Boca Chica. The sign isn't new. It's been in Florida for a while but it shows something very interesting if you look closer. See the legs on Super Heavy? It's unknown if SpaceX will go with this design, but it would be a proven concept as Falcon 9 boosters have been using these kinds of legs for a long time now. We'll have to see what the future brings for Super Heavy, but it's likely that we have a very interesting journey ahead. It's incredible to see how far SpaceX has come just in a few years. From a wild concept to a working prototype phase progressing so fast that it's hard to keep up. There are plenty of set milestones for the future. Orbital within the year, lunar starships by 2022, orbital refueling on the way, first cargo missions to Mars probably also by 2022, Earth to Earth crewed flights, a first crewed flight to Mars. What comes after is hard to imagine, but if this design actually works, it's safe to say that this will make history. And it's the perfect example for going step by step. Each milestone leading up to a set goal. Each effort planned and executed, results examined and repeated. It's the only way if you want to make sure to reach the set goal. Why not do it the same way with a little help from today's sponsor? Brilliant does exactly that. All their courses guide you step by step towards more knowledge, towards understanding and towards a broadened horizon. Featured in international media and with high ratings from over 60,000 satisfied customers, 
they have shown for a long time that learning things the brilliant way can be the missing key. With content covering basic physics, math, orbital mechanics or computer science, Brilliant provides a huge library full of storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges and problem solving for you to improve yourself for future goals. Understand your surroundings and become a STEM expert. Brilliant makes that possible with interactive explorations and a mobile app that you can take with you wherever you are. Brilliant puzzles you, surprises you and expands your understanding of the modern world. To learn things the brilliant way and at the same time support What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up to try out over 60 interactive courses for free. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 people to join through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Learn things the brilliant way. Links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Do you have any pressing questions about Starship development? I'll see if I can answer them in a future episode. As always, tell me in the comments. And we're at the Patreon and YouTube member shoutout and today I want to show you something special here. Over the past few weeks I got some absolutely amazing presents from Patreons and YouTube members. This one for example comes from Art Guayardo. I met him at my community meetup in Boca Chica. He's a photographer and illustrator and he took the most beautiful picture of Starhopper I've ever seen. You can see the silhouette cast onto the fog in the background. I'll frame this and put it in the set. Oh and Art, if you ask yourself what I did with the cardboard roll you sent the picture in, it's a starship now. Another package reached me from John from Alabama. He sent me a copy of the book Blue Gemini, a space thriller written by a friend of his and he sent me a patch from his previous employer. He retired a few days ago and the guy was a state trooper for his whole life. Thank you for your service and enjoy your retirement. I want to thank all these people and many more for their support, for the love and all the help. Without them, what about it wouldn't be possible. I am eternally grateful for what you enable me to do. Show your love for them in the comments and maybe even consider becoming a patron yourself. And as always there are new members on the team. Everyone please give a warm welcome to John St. John, Chris Laders, Adam Brar, Julian Grobben and many others. You rock! And last but not least we're at the team shoutout again. They are the people that work every day to help me and produce the show twice a week. They research, proofread, administrate and animate and in doing so they fill in the gaps that I couldn't possibly fill in myself. Thank you so much for pushing me further and further. Today I want to give a shout out to Miko, a gem on the team. He organizes interviews, proofreads scripts and provides us all with his special Finland humor. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It and now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. We also, we also have the completed t hmm. <laughs> desired direction. God damn it. <laughs>